Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to iHeart Animation. Today's episode is a really special one. Katie Fabric has talked a bit about this on the show in the past, but she was an animator on a short film a couple of years ago called Cat and Moth. However, up until this week, we couldn't actually watch it. Cat and Moth has been making the rounds and winning awards in a bunch of animation festivals over the past year, but it is now out and available to watch. So now that it's online, I thought it would be fun to talk to Katie about her experience working on the short and discuss the cartoon itself. If you haven't watched Cat and Moth yourself yet, I recommend watching it before listening to this episode. I've linked it in the description along with the behind the scenes video if you want more about it. We'll give you a spoiler warning before we talk about the short itself, so either way, check it out and then listen on. Okay, let's talk to Katie about her time working on Cat and Moth. You see, this has been a trick. I'm actually here to talk about Across the Spider-Verse and why you should watch it. <laughs> I have a 30-page essay. It's got flashcards, and there will be a quiz later. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think to start with, we should probably just talk about like the behind-the-scenes stuff, because I have a feeling that if anyone starts listening to this, it's probably just going to be like, because they're curious about what we're talking about, they may not have seen this because, I mean, it doesn't have very many views on YouTube yet. So it's, yeah. I think it's still obscure enough that <laughs> they may not have seen it. So I want to talk behind the scenes first, and then we'll give a spoiler warning and then talk about the short itself. Okay. So to start with, can you just tell me kind of about this and how you got involved? Yeah, so it's kind of a weird a string of events. Basically, I, w I just graduated from a trade school of animation from Don Bluth, mm. which was really cool. And I was like, all right, I can animate now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and find something to animate. So I was looking and there used to be this website. It technically still exists, but it's changed now what they do called Artella. Um, it was made for small indie shorts and like studios to like kind of help them find a production team and to help organize all that and everything. And I stumbled across it one day and I saw a short called Cat and Moth. And I'm like, oh, this looks sweet. It had a few like pictures of the 3D rendered cat. It had a little bit of a video of storyboard. And then it like kind of described like this is what we're doing. We're doing a 2D, 3D hybrid short. It talked a little bit about what the story was going to be about. I thought it was sweet and cute. And they were hiring someone who did 2D art. And I thought, oh, they must need like a pre-production person like for drawing or storyboarding. So I'll apply for that, you know, I because like I'm not I was just out of animation. So I'm like. I can animate, but I can't animate, animate. <laughs> so I was like, I'll apply for that. So I just shot it out. And I was like, this will be fun. Probably won't get anything else. I shot out to a couple other things. I didn't get responses back for them. Or they said, thanks, but maybe in a couple more years, once you get a bit better. And I was like, oh, okay. But then I got a response in this one. And they're like, oh, yeah, we love your stuff. Could you work on it? And I'm like, oh, I'd love to do that. What would I be doing? And they're just like, oh, you'd be doing like 2D animation. And I was like, wait, what? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, we need like animators. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I would love to do that. Are you sure you want me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they uh, let me on board. Um, and I didn't realize how far along it was because they had been working on it since 2009 and i joined oh. in 2018 like 18 early 2019 so i was like oh wow they've been working on it for 10 years already so they were all they were getting very close to being done but they needed a few shots left for 2d animation and so they gave me the scene where the cat finds the couch and like curls up on it and then the 2d effects with like the clouds and the rainbow and everything okay they're like okay do that shot and i was like oh wow this is an important shot too <laughs> so I <was> like, ah. <laughs> and i cannot express how grateful i was to everyone working on that for being so understanding with me like when I took the Don Bluth class, he taught it traditional, like solid traditional. You got paper, you would scan it in and you would play out all the frames in order, kind of traditional, like old school Disney. Mm -hmm. So then 
This, I was like, well, now I need a digital program. How hard would that be? Ha, 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 ha. Well, spoiler alert, it was very hard (laughs) to learn a new program. (laughs) And so I was trying to learn a new program while also doing 2D animation. And I had just graduated. So I was like trying to find a job and all this. And it was like crazy. And that year I kept getting sick. I don't know why. I just was like the most contagious person. Like I just caught everything that year. And they were super sweet and they're super nice and understanding. And they helped me like if I did a shot and I would turn it in and they'd be like, all right, let's change that up or let's get the timing different or clean up the shots a little bit more. They were just so understanding and so helpful And they were like the nicest people ever (laughs) because I'm going to be honest, if I was them, I'd probably be like, okay, let me do that. You, you, you did a good effort. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So the fact that they let me not only have such an important scene of the movie and not just like a tiny little thing and then they put up with me for that length of time and how inexperienced I was with everything it's just it was amazing I loved it all so much it was like it was a really great environment for my first job Mm -hmm. and like it was just it was just wonderful we would have like weekly or bi-weekly meetings and people would be like all right we got like we've gotten the fur figured out or we've moved to a different rendering studio. So they would like show off things. And I got to see like the behind the scenes 2d artwork. Um, I got to work off of really well drawn storyboards and the 3d animation and the visual like um, composition and everything. Like everything was laid out super nicely for me so that when I came in to do the animation and I basically got I basically knew exactly what I had to do Mm -hmm. and so and then everyone was very helpful but we had these meetings and everyone would show their stuff and everyone was super positive and we talk about it it was really nice and just it was just a wonderful like it was a bunch of people who just like all enjoyed what we were doing especially a lot of people since they've been working on it for 10 years so it was like really amazing just like the environment and stuff and i've never i don't think i've ever worked in an environment that wonderful ever again so far i'm I'm not saying i never will but that's very pessimistic and i'm hoping (laughs) i'll I'll work in another uh area that's that amazing but it was super cool so can you tell us a little bit about who was behind the film um yeah so the film was basically conceived by india bernardo i'm sorry to all these people but names in me do not mix so i will say them the best i can and i know i worked with these people (laughs) so i should be able to say their names but it's been a little while and i am very bad at names i've i've if it makes anyone feel better i've said my own name wrong (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so the director is India Bernardo. Let's, let's get, I'm going to try to say that one more time. India Bernardo. There we go. <laughs> but um, there's her. There was the uh, CG um, supervisor, which is Amar. Um, I'm, I don't think... I'm sorry. I'm not going to attempt the last name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can attempt it. I th- It looks to okay. me like it's Chandavadra. Jonathan just can say all the names. We'll just have me say it, and then it's this person, and then we'll just have Jonathan's name like come in and say all the names. Like uh, text-to-speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, we also had uh, Martin Smith. He was like a huge editor and was in the story department as well. And then we had, you know, the composer, Liv Mir Wilson. Um, she did an amazing job on the music because, like, when I was working, the music hadn't been scored yet. She scored it to all the animation. And when I got to see the music on the part that I got to animate, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, 
I kind of had a little bit of a ditty in my head when I was animating and that blew it out of the water. I was like, <laughs> oh, that's that's perfect. Like that little ditty I had, no, that was that was rubbish. This was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then like, I mean, the whole cast, well, not cast, but the whole crew was just so amazing. I only, I unfortunately didn't get to meet everyone because... This was all online, so there were mm-hmm. so many people all over. But yeah, I think if I had to give out a big shout out, though, India was such a huge help. Like she would, she would take my stuff and she would like draw over it and be like, "Okay, let's fix this like this, and then this right here." And she was extremely patient and very positive and reassuring and you know supportive. And so I couldn't. I probably would have quit if. <laughs> she wasn't so uh nice about <laughs> everything because i was like I, I this is horrible i don't know what i'm doing wrong and she's just like oh it's like it's fine it looks amazing like she would always say that it looked great and but she would like point out the things and she always made me feel better about it and that she just pushed me to make it better yeah i'm super grateful for that because not only did it make me more confident as an animator it also made me more confident as an artist in general to kind of like you know trust my gut feeling or trust that something doesn't look right and not just say oh it's fine and like settle for a mid-ground but like really push it to be better Mm -hmm. yeah i don't think that india bernardo Mm -hmm. If that's how you pronounce it, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if she's going to be somebody that a lot of people are going to know, but I have a feeling that she will be. Yeah, she's currently working at Imageworks, and she's worked on the Sea Beast. She worked on Spider-Verse recently. She worked on Across the Mm Spider-Verse. She worked on, I think it's called The Wilburrows on Netflix. The Willoughbys, yeah. Thank you, The Willoughbys. So, like, she's worked on some really amazing projects, and she's so good at animating, like, Mm -hmm. my gosh. So, like, it's like whenever I see that she got to work on something, like, no way! (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, like, definitely everyone should keep an eye on her, because she's awesome, and she is working on some really cool stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess we can probably go into talking about the short now. And before we start, I'll give a spoiler warning, because even though this is a short, it does sort of have some twists in it that I feel like you should just watch it. It's short. Yeah. Watch it before yeah. you, before you continue and then come back and listen to the rest of this. Yeah. And I know I'm biased because I worked on it, but like, even if I hadn't, like, this is such a good short, like, mm-hmm. it's such a beautiful 2D, 3D combination done in such a simple, but really complex way i'm Mm -hmm. like if i would have stumbled this across this on youtube and been like oh my gosh this is like my favorite thing (laughs) (laughs) yeah when it first started i was like this is really cute adorable i love this and then it kind of turned into like the twilight zone (laughs) i was like oh wow this is this is different than i thought it was i i kind of love this (laughs) yeah so yeah we we talked about it's 2d and 3d mixed and at first it starts out just looking 3D, and I didn't realize how the 2D was going to merge with this. Mm -hmm. And it really is, like, it's all over the place. That I first really noticed it when the cat is on the globe, and the globe starts spinning in 2D, and I I love that effect. And then you have the cat going around trying to find a spot to sleep, and you get, like, little 2D elements added for, like, emphasis for, like, heat waves or wind blowing from a fan. Yeah. I thought that was really clever. And this cat is adorable. I know. <laughs> and the and the animation really makes it even more adorable. I love when it's sort of like dancing on the radiator because it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's such a joy. And and I love that the eyes are like 2D as well. I didn't notice it at first until I started noticing little 2D elements everywhere. And I was like, oh, the face too. And that, yeah. that reminded me of the bad guys. That's the one thing I really loved about the bad guys was the, especially the eyes being 2D. Yeah. It just gives it such a unique cartoony feeling. And I love that. And then it's not just the little elements that are 2D because you have a sequence after the cat finds the perfect spot to sleep. They have a bad dream about a monstrous moth and the dream is in 2D. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, I love that you get little scenes like that where it just turns completely into 2D. Yes. Um, that Nightmare Moth was also animated by India. She also did that scene um, as well as some 3D. Like, she can do 3D, 2D. So, like, that was the scene that followed right up after me. And she gave me, like, this short little half animated scene. And I'm like, this is half animated? This is better than what I know. <laughs> So, like, so I could, like, kind of try to time everything out. And, yeah, she's just, like, she's great. <laughs> so did you do some of the animation on that dream? I did not do... I did the, um like, the clouds and the rainbows in that shot. So just that one, the when it fell asleep? Yes. And then okay. I don't know factually, but I think think a few of the assets were reused when the moth cuddles up with the mm -hmm. i think at least a few of them were reused i i don't know for certain but i think they were I which i'm totally assume. okay with i'm totally yeah. fine with <laughs> that's totally okay but i i don't know because i didn't composite it so mm -hmm. but i think i drew those hearts enough that I think those were my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but I could be wrong. Someone could just be really good at drawing the hearts. Like <laughs> I drew those hearts. This is a little off the topic, but um, the cat's name is Ditto and the moth's name is Monty. I don't think it's <laughs> specifically specified in the short itself. I don't think so, because I didn't remember any names. Yeah, so the cat's name is Ditto and the uh, Moss name is Monty, and they're like the best names for this <laughs> chaotic duo. Yeah. So I guess Ditto <laughs> wakes <laughs> up from this dream, and then there's a real moth. And then I loved the scene where Ditto is a girl, right? Yes. Okay. So she goes and like hides and is like looking around for this moth. And then she's going to go back to the couch. And I love that she stops and does a little scratch on the scratching post. <laughs> And then jumps on the couch. <laughs> yeah. It's so, like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's so cat-like. Yeah, like... it's, it's so perfect. <laughs> and then she gets dive-bombed by this moth. <laughs> he wants this spot as well, for some reason. I'm not really sure why the moth wants this comfy spot on the couch. Because but... it's the most comfortable place on Earth. Yeah, it's, it's the perfect segue into, like, a Looney Tunes-esque chase sequence around the room complete with like a giant mismatched teetering pile of furniture like in a <laughs> Sylvester and Tweety cartoon <laughs> this really felt like a successor to the Looney Tunes it felt like a Sylvester and Tweety cartoon to me yes it had a lot of Looney Tune um inspirations mm -hmm. and then this is where things change because a light gets broken and then it zaps them and sucks them into like another dimension or something. I'm not really sure what happens after <laughs> this. It's all very surreal. I don't know if it is specified in like the script what exactly is happening. Did they tell you anything about that? Um, I didn't hear anything about that before. I didn't work I, like they were so far ahead with that. I think that scene was actually complete by the time I joined in. So it never really came up in topics, but I think it is like a separate dimension thing. I can't say anything for certain. That's what it gave me the vibes of um, mm -hmm. because of other um, aspects that happen later mm -hmm. or it's just cartoon logic. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> kind of what I was going for. But then it just really feels Twilight zone -y towards the end. Yeah. So when they get sucked into this other dimension it becomes 2d animation completely and then they have more of the chase but in a far more surreal manner until the cat grows wings and antenna and then they switch places with the cat fully becoming a moth and the moth becoming a cat and then they get zapped back into like i guess the real world but it's obviously not the same place because there's not a mess and the light bulb is not broken mm -hmm. but it looks the same and then the moth which is now a cat settles into the comfy spot on the couch and then the camera is like panning away and out of the room and it reveals that they're not in a room at all but they're in some kind of a shoebox thing floating <laughs> through space surrounded by like dozens of identical shoeboxes all flying to who knows where 
And then there's like a cat and moth silhouette in the nebula that they're flying towards. And then the camera keeps panning back. And then you come out like through a vent into another room. And then that's the end. It's <laughs> the cat and moth universe. Apparently. <laughs> So yeah, I really have no idea what was going on, but I kind of loved it. Right? Like, it's so surreal, and it, I don't know if I'd say it leaves you with more questions than answers, because, like, in the end, do the questions really matter? Probably not, because it's, <laughs> it. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a short cartoon, and I think it's just supposed to be fun, and yeah. I think they probably were going for a Twilight Zone thing, so I yeah. don't know that there is supposed to be an answer. I think it's just... Exactly. <laughs> it's just surreal and hilarious in its surrealness. Yeah. I also love that after the credits happen, the cat slash moth flies by with a little meow. Right. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Cat and Moth, a very cute short. I'm glad you worked on it because otherwise I probably wouldn't have never known about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I got to work on it and talk about it too because like... I finished working on it, like, I think it was in the two, uh, 2020 is when we had the crew um, watch party where we all got together and we watched it online, obviously, because, like I said, like, this is over 90 people all over the world. It was amazing, like, mm -hmm. and then it was really amazing when they were like, we're going to put in a film festival. So you're like, oh, that's really cool. And then it started winning awards. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, I think it deserves it, obviously. But it was really surreal to think like something I stumbled across was that amazing. Like, yeah, I thought it was amazing and I would have given it a reward, <laughs> but I didn't think... I don't want to say I don't think other people would give it a word. I, it's hard to describe that feeling, just that it's more surreal to me, not that it got awards, but that I somehow got into the short that got rewards, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and I think I know what you're talking about. Do you know if it's, is it is it too late for it to be eligible for the Oscars, or can it be eligible the next time? It might be too late, unfortunately, this year, because I do remember when it won the um, reward at the, I think it was the Vancouver Short Film Festival. I think that got it up to the point that it was eligible to get to an Oscar. Mm -hmm. So it could be this year. I'm not quite sure how the whole award oscar thing works i hope for everyone who works on the crew maybe it can it's one of those things where the the release date is like i don't know how much that factors in for shorts because like with movies you have like a definitive release date like this yeah. was released in 2023 so it's eligible for the 2023 oscars yeah but like the shorts they're not exactly released until like it's hard to know what counts as the official release because like it gets into a film festival but yeah. like it only just came online for us to watch this week. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. So maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> that would be really cool if it does. Oh yeah, that. I mean, again, I think it deserves it. Not just because I was a person who worked on it, obviously, but <laughs> because just like everyone's hard work and the amount of love and the amount of joy that it, it is, and that you could tell people who worked on it put into it, it deserves the rewards for mm -hmm. that reason. Yeah. Plus, it's just so creative. Yeah. And, and the animation is great. Exactly. Like sometimes, and, and I don't want to like feel like I'm <laughs> bragging on other Oscar-nominated shorts, but sometimes... You've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Jonathan they... hates animation. <laughs> no, they sometimes just feel like... Not that they have to be happy, but Oscar shorts sometimes feel a bit morose. Uh huh. And I don't know. the The character design isn't always fun. Like it, I mean, it matches the tone that they're going for, which is fine. But yeah, I don't know. With this one, the character design is so much fun, and I love <laughs> the blending of the two D and three D animation, which you don't always see. I mean, it's becoming more common these days, thankfully, because I think it's so cool. Yeah. But. I don't know. It just feels like something that deserves a shot at something like the Best Animated Short Oscar. 
that's two votes from us. <laughs> now, if we can get to the Oscars and our votes matter, then that's two votes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I guess that's probably going to be all for this episode. A short episode for a short short. <laughs> but a sweet short. Yeah. That's also a thing I love about it is that it doesn't overstay itself, but it doesn't feel too short. Yeah. Like, you're like, wait, I need more. Like, obviously, I would love more because I love the characters and, like, the visual style. But, like, it's not like it leaves you wanting no, it's it's like the perfect length. It's like an old school Looney Tunes cartoon. Like when yeah. you told me you were working on a short, I, I think I just figured it was going to be something like you would normally see on YouTube. That's like three, maybe mm -hmm. four minutes, but this was over yeah. seven minutes. So it's like a really nice length and exactly. a really well told story. Yep. Okay. Well, until we do another episode, do you want to let people know where they can find you if they want more from you? Yep, you can find me in the Spider-Verse, because that's where I live. No, no. Um, <laughs> sorry. I saw that movie on Sunday, and I I can't get it out of my head. So, um, yeah, I saw it on opening day here. It was amazing. Yeah, I was like, I want to go opening day, but I had this whole like thing planned with my family, and I, I was like, that'd be cruel to go watch it by myself, and then like <laughs> everyone else go see it for the first time. So I'll wait. But it was like really hard because like, like all my other friends were like seeing it, and they're just like, "Wow, it's amazing!" I'm like, "Shut up, stop it, <laughs> leave me alone." <laughs> I'm sitting here not watching it. But yeah, no, it was it's it's so good. But anyways, yeah, you can find me at um, Twitter and Instagram at Katie Draws Things. I draw things and animate on adorable cartoons shorts apparently <laughs> are you working on anything now or are you sworn to secrecy i am currently right now i'm doing um comic book covers for a web comic i did one batch for volume two of western regions which you can find on tapas but i am doing more comic covers for a spinoff of that comic and hopefully other things in the future Okay. So, so, uh, cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for joining me. Hopefully this has inspired some people to go and check this out who may have never heard of it because I wouldn't have heard of it except I knew you. So I've been looking forward <laughs> to watching it for quite a while. Yeah. If, hey, if you like animation, you'll like this. If you like cats, you'll like this. If you like moths, you'll like this. <laughs> if you like, um, moose heads, you'll like this. If you like the Twilight Zone, you'll like this. Yeah. If you like good music, old Looney Tunes shorts, you'll yes. like this. It has something for everyone. Exactly. Okay, well, until next time. Bye! Thanks for listening to iHeart Animation. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow my co-hosts as well, and if you want more content from us, check out one of the other podcasts in the iHeart Movies Podcast Network, or check out my brand new Patreon. My link tree, as well as any other relevant links, will be in the description. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.